Hey gang, it's Haya. Welcome back to our weekly vlog. And today we are gonna talk about a subject that's kind of a follow-up to last week. So last week, the topic of our discussion was, why are you eating that? So today, we're gonna cover, why are you drinking that? Now, I have to start with a disclaimer because this conversation is probably gonna make me a very, very, unpopular person because this is a topic that hits close to home for a lot of people and I know for me I was totally blind to uh, what we're gonna discuss today for years like decades and I was completely sucked in as a part of this culture for years upon years upon years without any real clue to the bigger picture of what was going on. So what I'm gonna talk about today is alcohol. Why are we drinking it? Now we're gonna discuss it today from uh, three angles and none of those angles is from a moral perspective. So I am not addressing your moral code. I am not going into your moral beliefs or your religious beliefs because every person has their own there. And who am I to say what's right or wrong for you in that perspective? So I'm not even gonna go there today, okay? We're gonna look at this from a health perspective. We're gonna look at it from a productivity perspective. And we're gonna look at it from an anchor on your life perspective. So again, just like last week, this conversation is geared specifically to my self-professed high-performing friends. Those of you that aspire to be high achievers in your life and you wanna make sure that you are tapping into every piece of your potential on this planet. You want to fulfill and experience every ounce of the opportunity and the potential and the purpose that God has given you for your time on this earth. And we wanna make sure that we are unveiling, revealing, and eliminating anything that could possibly be standing in the way of us and our maximum performance, us and fulfilling our ultimate potential, okay? So if you just wanna sit back and enjoy life and just, you know, uh, whatever comes my way, comes my way, I'm just like in the passenger seat and I just wanna have a good time and enjoy and, and you know, whatever it is, is, okay, this conversation is not for you. If that's the case, you can eat a little, you can drink a little, you can enjoy life and when it's over, it's over. Okay, that's not what we're talking about here. I'm talking about those of you that are serious about digging deeper to absolutely maximize yourself, your potential, and every opportunity that was designed for you on this earth. All right, let's go. From the, the first perspective, from a health perspective, here's the thing. Actually, I wanna show you something very, very interesting, okay? This is a, a, an ad, okay? This is from a magazine that was delivered to my house, Forbes, okay? The Forbes 400 Richest People in America. This was uh, last month's issue of Forbes. And I'm just flipping through the, the magazine and I come across a very interesting ad. In fact, it is a beautiful ad and it is a brilliant ad, okay? So this says, here's to the shot takers, the rule breakers, the originators, the all-nighters, the creators, the chasers, the hustlers, the founders, the innovators, the movers, the shakers, the makers, and the initiators. And then it says, hashtag a shot worth taking. Now, y'all, this is a brilliant ad, okay? I have nothing against this, uh, let's see, Horn Hornitos Tequila, the maker of this alcohol and the maker of this ad. The ad is brilliant. Now, what I find interesting about this ad is the backstory and the history of what goes into getting us where we are today. So before we even go into health and productivity, we have to look very, very quickly at the backstory of how alcohol became such a heavily prevalent piece of our society. You cannot go anywhere today. The statistics of the number of people that are drinking on a regular basis are shocking, shocking. And I was one of them for a very long time. It was just a part of society. It was a part of culture. It was socially what we did. Okay, and I think except for, you know, a very few um, small religious groups, 
everyone was doing it because it had just become a part of modern day society. You know, if you go into any restaurant, um, the, the alcohol bill is much bigger than the food bill. It's much more piece of the revenue. Same thing in the airline industry. People are drinking the, the, um, the, the revenues through the, you know, it's not so much the snacks that are making the airlines money. It's the, the little tiny, you know, things of alcohol. Now, Look over here. <clears throat> this is a book that I came across a while back and it's called Her Best Kept Secret. And it says why women drink and how they regain control. Now, the interesting thing about this book is it talks about the history of how alcohol became so prevalent in the United States and specifically how they started targeting women. So up until the last, I don't know, 100 years or so, Wine was not a big thing at all in this country. And only in the 1950s and 1960s did it start to become marketed to women. Why? Because the wine industry and the alcohol industry was trying to figure out how they can make more money and they realized two things. Number one, that wine and number two, women were a very untapped market. So they knew if they started growing the wines and making them sweeter and specifically advertising them to the emotions of women then it, they could explode this market how did they do it they started off I'm going to show you a picture here with all of our favorite Lucille Ball so they actually hired Lucille Ball in the 1940s to become their spokesperson for making table wine something that was normal in the American household and the hilarious parts are talking about how it tasted so bad for her that she kept spitting it out and kept having to try it again and do multiple takes because it just tasted so bad. You know her famous like pucker face. And so she was having to try to move past this again and again and again until she could look genuine at making it taste good. Okay, now why am I telling you all this? Okay, so if you start digging into, that's where it started. I'm not going to spend hours explaining it to you, but it's just kind of funny how it started. And now if you, if you go from there to where we are today, okay, people say, well, wine, well, you know, if you have a glass, it's good for the heart, la, la, la. Well, the reality is that the, the and, and this was heartbreaking for me to learn, heartbreaking, that if you look at the, uh, the benefits versus the opposite, then the, the opposite actually much more outweighs the benefits, the health benefits. So the health risks are, are much stronger. So first of all, when you're looking at the sulfites in the wine and you're looking at what happens as it's fermenting and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the alcohol, we don't even have to go into it and the beer, we're not even gonna go there, but the amount of binge drinking that's happening on college campuses today, yada, yada, yada. We know all that. I don't need to be here for that. But the reality is that when you look at not just the hangover of what happens the day after you've been drinking, but you're looking at the fact that it's killing a shocking number of brain cells, that it's giving liver damage, most women do not know the shocking statistics of the increase in breast cancer. The increased risk of breast cancer when you're drinking on a regular basis is terrifying and shocking, okay? Not to mention the amount of stomach cancer and liver cancers and, and just damage that happens to the body as a result of repetitive drinking. Most people, we don't pay attention to that and they're certainly not advertising that, you know, like screaming it from the rooftops, okay? So from a health perspective, if you are a high performing individual, if you are a peak performer and you wanna make sure that you are maximizing your best, is it really going to help you? Remember what we've talked about the last several weeks is I'm going for longevity. From a health perspective, if I have massive goals and I wanna rock this world and I wanna do all these things on my bucket list and I wanna make a difference in the world and I wanna see my mission fulfilled and I wanna see my kids and my grandkids and their grandkids, I've gotta live for longevity. So is this regular consistent consumption of alcohol, is this helping my longevity or is it hurting my longevity? We have to take a real hard look at that, okay? Again, I'm not questioning your morals and I'm not questioning your consciousness and all of those things, that's not where I'm going here, okay? So from a health perspective, is it contributing to or is it taking away from my longevity? That's question number one. Second angle that we're gonna look at is the angle of productivity. So if I am a high performing individual and I want to maximize my output, is alcohol helping me or is it hurting me? I think that one is a no brainer. We know it puts you to sleep instantly. Okay. On top of that, 
isn't it so interesting though that even though I am gonna have one glass of wine or one drink or whatever the case may be, and it's gonna make you quote unquote relaxed, which leads to instant lethargy. Who do you know that has ever had a glass of wine or a beer or forget two or three, and then you wanna hop up and go to work and you're like, yes, I can't wait to attack my goals. No, what does it lead you to do? Relax, chill, oh, it can wait till later. And two or three, you're asleep, okay? But it is not priming you for peak performance. But isn't it so interesting that these ads are making us think, if I'm an entrepreneur, if I'm a high performer, if I'm a wheeler and a dealer, if I wanna be cool as a hustler, and if I want to really rock my side hustle, or if I want to um, really be an innovator and a thought leader and someone that is a, a pioneer and I'm gonna tread a new path and I'm gonna make a difference in the world, well then I need to drink alcohol or I need to drink this tequila or whatever the case may be. It sounds so lame when you put it like that, but y'all, that is the power of subliminal advertising. Otherwise, why is this ad in Forbes? Okay, now think about it. how many college kids today, how many high school kids today, every movie they watch, every scene that's on the media, everything in social media, all of the advertisements. When they go to a restaurant, what do they see? When you become older, you can drink. When you, uh, if you wanna be cool, you drink. If you wanna fit in, you drink. This is the social circle of the adult world. Y'all, the adult social circles are no more than high school clubs and college sororities with 10 years under their belt. It's the same exact thing. And if you wanna be cool, this is what we do. How does it contribute to, con to, to, to our productivity? Please help me understand. How? It doesn't, but we have been so conditioned and so programmed over the last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, we no longer even know where it came from, how it got here, and we don't understand how it is keeping us on this path of operating at less than who we were designed to be. So from a productivity perspective, is it helping you or is it hurting you? Now, guys, what you do on your free time, if you wanna go relax, if you wanna use it just socially, et cetera, et cetera, I understand all of those arguments and I am not here to tell you any different. That is not my point. I am not here to make you feel guilty over your glass of wine, okay? What I am gonna ask you, and this is the question that I had to ask myself. Look, I had an off again, on again, like relationship, love affair for so long before I could finally understand all of my poor choices were linked to this. It was keeping me stuck in, in, it was a lid that was keeping me from the next level of life that I wanted to achieve. And that's our third angle that I want to um, evaluate this from here is, is it an anchor on your progress in any way? So we looked at from a health perspective, from a productivity perspective, now from an anchor perspective. Is alcohol serving as an anchor on your progress in any way? If you can say no, I totally use it only occasionally. I could take it or leave it, it doesn't matter to me. If I just wanna socialize every now and then, or if I just wanna relax every now and then, I, I, I use it as a tool, I could take it or leave it either way. Amazing, thumbs up, you pass the test and you 100% can continue doing what you're doing without any questions, without any guilt or, or any problems, okay? But the fact of the matter is that is a rare, rare percentage of people in the Western world today. The vast majority of people, I'm not gonna use the word addicted as in like you are an alcoholic. That's not what I'm saying here because that's not the case for most people. Most people, it has just become a part of our conditioning. It's become a, a part of our programming and we are now unconscious to how this alcohol use has become an anchor on our progress. So my question for you is this, are you drinking consciously or compulsively? In other words, can you take it or leave it? Does it contribute to you having a good day or a bad day? Are you physically or emotionally attached to it in any way? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. And if I am attached, if it is contributing to me having a good day or a bad day, is that really what I want for myself? Do I really want to be locked in or imprisoned to a glass of liquid? Do I want a glass of liquid to determine whether or not I have a good day or a bad day? Do you understand the psychosis here? It's the same thing with a cup of coffee. Do I wanna let a cup of coffee 
dictate whether or not I have a good morning or a bad morning. That was a big one for my husband and I five, six years ago, whenever it was now that we finally kicked coffee, we literally had to say it was like our 12 step program. We're turning away from it and we're never going back. And when my husband, I've told you the story, when he had to get rid of coffee, the amount of withdrawals physically that he went through were unbelievable, which just goes to show it is not something that is good for us at that level. So let's wrap up. Whether it's coffee, whether it's alcohol or anything else, do you want any outside substance, anything outside of you to determine whether you have a good day or a bad day? If we are emotionally attached to it in any way, how can it be good for us? And is that something that we want to allow to con con contribute to our weakness? Or do we wanna be bulletproof? Do we wanna be stronger than that? Speaking of bulletproof, there is this fantastic organization, they call themselves Bulletproof, and they make a Bulletproof coffee and a few other things. And the guy that runs the organization, he has actually done a lot of research into if I wanna be Bulletproof, does alcohol help me or not? And he's given actually a scale and the scale shows if you insist on drinking, but you want to minimize the impact on your body, which alcohols are better and which ones are worse. And I think the results might shock you. So if you'd like, I'm happy to share that for you. I can put the link to it here in the comments. I can put a link to a few of these articles and a few of these pictures in the comments and you decide for yourself. Again, no judgment from me whatsoever. This has nothing to do with your moral code or your religious beliefs, but from a health productivity and anchor on your performance perspective. Is it helping you or is it hurting you? And from a conscious versus unconscious perspective, the question is, why are you drinking it? If you have a good reason, great. If you don't have a good reason, you have to admit to yourself that, yep, I'm slipped into unconsciousness and I've, been, I've just been programmed and conditioned and now I'm becoming awake to the fact that, hey, maybe I wanna rethink this. So long as you know why you're doing what you're doing, you're on the right path. I love you guys. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. And please don't hate me. Don't shoot the messenger. Love you guys. Bye for now.